This is the next video in the series of how to create the boomerang. As you can see over here, I've um, pulled up this uh, JPEG that shows the profiles that I'm going to be creating on these planes. All right, so one, two, three, four profiles I need to make. Uh, this last one is just where the point is, so I'm not going to need to make one there. Now, if I look here, um, this arc, this first one has three smaller arcs. This one has three arcs, but these two do not have this third arc. It just comes to a point or to the point uh, without an arc. So just a couple things to keep in mind. You may need to add in a reference uh, depending on um, how you created the points on the guide rail. So this 11.43 was to make it fully constrained. Um, you know, sometimes we just have to be a little flexible in that last um, effort to get it fully constrained. I'm going to start here. And as you can see, it's pretty wild. So I can turn off uh, all these construction planes just to make it easy on myself, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm on plane one. And like I said, it's a series of arcs. And it's going to start and end at the uh, points I've already made. So I need to make sure and bring those into this sketch. Okay, I have those two points. And actually, I'm going to need that bottom line too, or at least create a line across it because I do have to have an enclosed uh, design. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so I have that bottom part. And now, like I said, it's arcs. Okay, so I have one arc. Tangent again, a big large arc right in the middle, and another arc at the end. As always, tangent's my friend here. And just make sure this arc that you have at least a half circle. The um, This is greater than a half circle, and, you, and this one at the tail end is less than a half circle. Just remember that as we're going. This is what's necessary to create um, the airflow of the wing design that's going to give this lift. Now put in the dimensions, 31.75. This one is 0.38, a very small one, but a necessary one. And the one on the front is 0.76. That looks pretty good. I'm not exactly sure why it didn't uh, fully constrain. Oh, it, it has to do with the center points. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell the center point to go directly under that end point. That's going to give me a nice, um, well, if it'll let me. Oh, I know what I need to do is just put it on this line. There you go. That's it. That was the one dimension I needed there all right so now if you look uh this is a very good airfoil design which creates lift going up and what make what makes the boomerang work so now i'm going to replicate a very similar design but with the dimensions the correct dimensions for this plane and remember these two do not have that third arc at the end they just uh this large arc terminates directly at that point and just use those dimensions now Keep in mind, these two are actually the same dimensions, but because of the endpoints, this is actually has more area under the wing. Uh, so go ahead and create the rest of those. New sketch. I need to turn that second plane on. Okay, I like to work right here. Create. First thing I do is bring in those from the other, bring in those points. As you remember, make a line because you need the bottom profile and then create your arcs. Now, same thing, this first arc, we want to have greater than second arc and the third arc is going to be a very small one. All right, so this kind of shows you how to work uh, towards the end, and then those will all be done for the next video.